In today's video, we're going to cover the code behind the CLI behind Chad CN UI. Chad CN is a collection of reusable components built using Radix UI and Tailwind CSS. It's not a component library itself. It's a collection of reusable components that you can copy and paste into your own apps. And you can also do that via the CLI that we'll be covering today. We'll go over how Shad CN CLI uses Commander and also its use of ASTs to pass files and edit them. If you're new here, every week I do a video on a different open source project and we dive into the code behind it to learn from it. This video is sponsored by Inbox Zero. Inbox Zero is an open source app that helps you manage email more efficiently with the help of AI. I'm the creator of it, so go take a look. The link is in the description below. So let's get started. Shatian UI is a great component library. Here you can see some of the components it gives you. It looks amazing and you'll notice a lot of open source and other projects are using it today. Here are some different cards you can use. Everything just looks really clean and pretty. Here's a task table and you can see how much functionality is built in out of the box. All of this code is open source, it's MIT licensed and it's very easy for you to add to your own project. Taking a look at components, you can see how to get started with ShadCN. But to add an accordion to your project, all you do is run npx ShadCN UI latest add accordion and you'll have an accordion added to your project. And this is what the accordion looks like. I'm going to go and add the accordion to my own project. So let's copy the PMPM script. I'm going to paste it in and we're going to go and add the accordion. The script is finished and we can take a look at this file and we'll see that the accordion has been added. Now, what's different to this to a normal package component library that you might be used to is that a regular component library, you'd go and import the component from the package. Here, what's happening, we're not importing the component from the package. We're adding it directly to the project. Why does this matter? Because if I want to go and change the accordion item, it's very easy to do. I just change the classes. It's regular React. It's part of my project. I have full control over it. So let's say I want to do border green. I can do that over here. If we now want to use this accordion in our project, let's go back to the documentation and see how it's used. The usage is as follows. So let's copy and paste this in. I'm going to add the imports to the top and I'm going to add the component into my page. And there we have it. So let's open up localhost 3000. And here we can see we have our component ready. Now the spacing is just on my end. We would obviously add some margin. It would look better. And here are some other components I added. For example, here's a calendar picker and here's a button that comes with Shad CN. Now that we've covered the components, let's dive into the CLI and how it works behind the scenes. We've already covered one command. To add an accordion, we ran the CLI script. But to get started, the first command you run is actually the init script. Here I've run the init script and it's asking me a few questions. So one, do I want to use TypeScript or not? So yes. What style do I want? At the moment, Shad CN has two styles. We'll go with the default. They both look pretty similar. Enter, 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 and so on. Now it's going to set up our project and initialize it. I had actually done this before, which is why add component works. Here you can see the Shad CN schema for the project. It has some settings like whether React, we're using React server components, if we're using TSX or JSX, Tailwind, and so on. You can see it's added this CN util script and a few other things. So how does this work behind the scenes? Let's jump into the code and take a look at the GitHub repository to learn how we could have built this CLI ourselves. The GitHub repo is at shadcn UI slash UI at github.com. You can take a look, you can see the components and so on. But let's take a look at it in our VS Code editor to dive in deeper. Once we've cloned the repo, we can take a look at its structure. For example, we can see that it uses PMPM workspaces. And over here, you can see it's using Turbo Repo. If you want to learn more about Turbo Repo, we covered another project that uses it in the past. So you can learn more about it there. But if you're just using Turbo Repo for the first time, what I suggest is you actually start a new project, go to the Turbo Repo website, Follow the instructions there and set up your own project. This is the easiest way to understand what's going on because then you'll notice that a lot of the structure here is just straight out default turbo repo structure. You have an apps folder. It contains one app, which is a www folder. And then it also contains some packages. In our case, it contains just one package, the CLI package. The website uses the CLI package. But also when we're running the npx command, we're also using the CLI package. A great place to start when looking at any repo is taking a look at the package JSON. This will give you an idea of the core dependencies it's using. So for example, in this project, we see it's using commander. This is what we use to run the CLI tool. And we also have some packages that help us edit the AST. So tsmorph, recast, and some others are used for that. To create an MPX script, all you have to do is add a bin field to the package.json file. It's as simple as that. And now you have an executable MPX script. Diving further into the CLI package, we'll see here are the different commands we can use. You can run an init command that we saw before. 
or an add command that adds a new component. And then there's also a diff command that allows you to see what changes would be made to your project. But we're not gonna cover that one today. Jumping into index.ts, this is the entry point for the CLI. And we can see immediately it's using commander. This is how you use commander. You do new command, you give a name for the CLI, which in our case is Chad CNUI. You can give a description, some version information, and then we go and add the different commands. So the three commands we mentioned, we have an init command, an add command, and a diff command. And the project is set up very nicely that we import one from each folder. Of course, you could have added these functions in this file as well. The init command initializes the project. So what does it actually go and do? Well, we took a look before when we were running it, but now we can see the code as to what, how it actually works. So first you can see the command itself is called init. So that's when we type init into this CLI, the project is gonna to know to call this. And then you can see we have two different options. You can have an, a yes option, which is similar to npm init, where it just skips to the end and takes yes as the answer for everything. And you can also change the working directory. So the way to do this, you can either add dash yes or dash dash yes and pass its commander. And here you can give a description for the problem. The actual action that is run is this function over here. So you can see immediately what we're doing is we're getting the different options that are sent to us from commander. Over here, it's either yes or CWD. We're then using Zod to pass this to make sure our object is in the right shape. And you can see the TypeScript definition for this is exactly what we expect. A string for CWD and a Boolean if the user said yes or not. And by the way, you can also see what the default value is if the user doesn't use these options. In terms of yes, the default is no, i.e. false. And for the current working directory, it's just wherever we are right now, which makes sense. So you could just run in it like we did without any other commands. The next thing we do is check if the project has a config file. The config file is what we saw before. It looks something like this, components.json. And if it's already been set up, the project can reuse those. But if not, it's going to send a prompt and ask us questions. That function is down here. The library that asks the questions is called prompts. And you can see we import it from the prompts package on NPM. The questions we saw before, would you like to use TypeScript? That's where this is coming from in the code. So the value of this field is TypeScript. The default value is yes, active is yes, and so on. Now let's take a look at what that looked like. Here you can see, would you like to use TypeScript? And the answers are yes or no. And the default option was yes. Now, another small thing you'll notice is over here, TypeScript is highlighted. And how is that done? It uses a library called chalk, which is very common for CLI tools. And here you can see the color is cyan. The next question we get asked is a select box. Which style would you like to use? And again, we have different choices for styles. The styles were either default or New York. And then we get asked about colors and so on and more and more select. Eventually we get answers to all these questions and we use these to create the config file. Here you can see again, we're using Zod to pass the options and now we've created a config. Now we're gonna have one more question. Do we want to write this configuration to the components.json file? You can see there's also the skip option and that happens if we've said dash dash yes, it will just skip this and auto write it. So if we've said yes, what happens next is that we'll go and actually write the file. So you can see here's the target path. We use fs to go and write the file to disk and it does it. A nice package that is used here is Aura, which is for spinners. If you remember, we saw the spinner running in the CLI. So that is done with this package. It's very simple. You can see writing components.json dot 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 start. Then we can actually write the file. And then lastly, when the spinner has succeeded, we're gonna show a check mark. And that's what that package does. Now that we've written the config file, we can actually go and initialize the project. So this is the run init function. Then we're going to make sure certain directories exist. I'm just gonna skip over this for now. We're gonna decide whether we're writing TS files or JS files, and that's dependent on what we answered in the config questions. Here, we're going to start fetching our templates. So for example, before we saw the utils file, how is that created? It's just a string template and we're just gonna write it to disk. You can see there are two versions. This is a TypeScript version of it. And this is the JavaScript version of it without any types. Once we set up all the files, we're just going to go and write them to disk. What you'll also notice in the templates is that some of them use Lodash template. So for example, this is for the Tailwind config file and you'll see there's an extension parameter or variable. And over here, this could either be TS or TSX. And so when we're writing the Tailwind config, if we just take a look again, 
Tailwind config. You'll see that if we're using Tailwind config extension, we're using Tailwind config TS with variable. And then later on down here, when we're writing the file, we're going to replace the variables. So for example, here, we're using template from Lodash and we're replacing it with extension. And extension is either going to be JS or TS. Moving on down the code, we're also going to get the base color. And now this works a little differently. This isn't coming from our template file. This is coming from a remote registry. So let's take a look at where the colors are actually taken from. And if I go to the Shatian website, slash registry, slash colors, slash slate.json, you'll find all the different values. And they are all saved here. If I go to the fetch registry code, notice we're passing this colors base color.json. And then over here, the full URL is the base URL, then the registry, and then as we saw, colors, and then the color we've chosen, slate in our case, and then JSON. If we chose gray, this is what it would look like. Slightly different. Every color would be gray instead of slate that we had before. Now that we have all our different pieces, whether it was taken from the CLI locally or from the remote registry, we can go and write it to disk. And once we've done that, we show again the spinner.succeed and the spinner's done. The last thing we're going to do is imp install the NPM packages. So what we need to decide is one, let's run our spinner again. Two, get the package manager. And this is interesting. This uses a package called Anfu NI. So what Anfu NI does is it detects from our project what package manager we're using. Are we using NPM, BUN, PMPM, or YARN? You can actually use this not even from the CLI. I'll show you what this looks like. Here you can see the package on NPM and you can see the way to use it is just run NI on your project and then it will run the relevant command. So you might not know if the project is using barn or yarn or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just run NI and that will figure out the right command to run. And this is helpful for our, for our project. So we don't have to write logic to decide is this a barn or an NPM project? It will just run the install command based on what it's figured out, looking whether we have a package lock, a yarn lock, and so on. So now we have the package manager. What we're going to do is install the different dependencies we need. You can see here, if we're using the New York style, we're actually going to use Radix UI React icons. And if we're using the default side, we're going to use loose side React for the icons. The project dependencies we're using, we can take a look. We're using Tailwind CSS Animate, CLSX, and some other packages, CVA. And then when we actually go and run the command to install the packages, that's what happens over here. So exec A is used to do that, run the package manager. So that would be something like barn or NPM here. Then we're going to add the dependencies. Now it will either be install or add. So if we're using NPM, we'll run NPM. Install, if we're using yarn, we'll run yarn add. And then we'll go and install all the dependencies that we want. Finally, we'll install it in the working directory that the user has given us. And by default, that's just the folder you're running the CLI from. And that's that. We can show the success spinner. And now we've initialized the project, created lots of different files, and we're ready to start using it. Jumping back, remember, we have three different commands. Till now, we've just taken a look at the init command. Now let's take a look at the add command. Add starts off in a similar way to the init command. First, we have a schema that gives us our different options. Here we have our commander js add command and here you can see the different options that we have here again is the logic for the command so let's quickly run through this first we're going to pass through all our options using zod we're going to get our registry index the registry index looks like this again it's hosted on the shad cn website it's remote it's part of this project but it's in a different part it's sort of it's part of the website and we're going to fetch it remotely instead of from the javascript code it contains all the different components that we can make use of here you can see the component accordion that we installed before, and you can see it's different dependencies. It depends on Radix UI React accordion. Something I didn't mention before is that ShadCN relies on Radix UI. Radix UI is a component library. So for example, hey, if you just want to use the core of it, just use Radix UI. But if you want the ShadCN styling that's built on top, then use ShadCN. And you can see the different files we need to install ui accordion.tsx and you can see the type of the file which is a ui file and just jumping into how we fetch from the registry again we're doing fetch registry we're sending the array of just one item which is index.json and we fetch that from the remote server then we pass it with zod now that we've done the initial setup we're going to check with the user which components they want to add now you have an option to just install all of them in one go and then we'll just go through the entire registry and install everything. Or we could have passed components to the command line. And that's what we did before. The third option is actually just running add 
without any options after it, and then we'll be prompted to choose which components we want to add. So let's test that out. We'll run add, and here you can see the select component. So we could add accordion as we did before. We can add alert and so on. And we keep keep selecting things, or we can toggle them all with A. So I've just gone and added the alert, and it's done. And here you can see the alert has been added to my project. The next part of the code, we check whether anything's been selected or not. If not, we'll just exit as an error. The next step is to resolve the tree of dependencies. So this is easiest to explain if we take a look at the index index.json file. Here, for example, you'll see the calendar component. It makes use of the button. So even if we haven't installed button, we'll need to install it when we're installing the calendar. And here you can see it has registry dependencies and button. So when we install button, it will actually create two files for us, both calendar and button. So how does that work? We take a look at the registry index. We take a look at our selected components and we're gonna resolve the tree. And that basically goes through them, finds all the registry dependencies and fetches them. And we'll be able to add all of them in one go. Next, we're gonna fetch the tree. This is exactly what we did before. Next, we're gonna fetch the tree and you can see the place we fetch it from in the remote registry is style slash style item.name.json. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here you can see I've loaded up the file for button. You can see here it's giving me the code for the component and some other information. This is more detailed than the information we saw in the registry. This actually allows us to write this code into our project. So now that we've resolved the tree of components, we fetch the tree of components. So we have the code for all the components. We're also gonna get the base color from the registry, which we saw before. And now we're actually gonna go and confirm and install it in our project. Each file is written to the correct place. We do some transformations on the files, which we'll actually take a look at in a second. And then the final step, as we saw before, we're gonna do an NPM install or a yarn add or a barn add, whatever it is, to add the components to our project. So that's the add command. It's actually really simple. And it was pretty simple, add was pretty simple. The code is really clean, so it's nice to learn from. And if you're ever writing a CLI yourself, this is a great place to get ideas from and improve your code quality. Last thing I want to cover is the transformations because these can actually get a bit complex. So let's take a look at what happens in each transformation. Here you'll notice a transform command. Now what this transform command does is it's gonna manipulate the source files we've just received. So the first thing we do is we create a temporary source file and then we're gonna run through all the different transformers that we have and we're gonna adjust the files to our project. So let's take a look at the different transformers we have. We have transform import, transform RSC, which stands for React Server Component and then transform CSS files. So let's take a look at the most basic form of transform that we have in this project and it's for RSC. You'll notice the different transformers in this folder down the side. Now, if the user has decided to use RSC, then all we're gonna do is return the source file. But if they've said, no, we're not using React Server Components, then we want to remove use client from each file that we add to their project. So how do we do this? We take the source file that we have and then we're gonna take get first child by kind and we want the first expression statement. Now we're gonna check, is that text equal to use client? And if it is, we're going to remove that from our code. This uses a package called tsmorph. If we take a quick look at tsmorph, we can see it's setup navigation and manipulation of the TypeScript AST. It, that can be a challenge, this library helps you do that. Now, what is an AST? This is the most advanced concept in the video, but an AST stands for abstract syntax tree. You can go to yeah, astexplorer.net and you'll get a better idea of how ASTs work. So for example, this code on the left, it can be converted into an AST, which is just a JSON file. So this is what the JSON file looks like if we convert this into JSON. If you want to play around with AST Explorer, you'll be able to see, for example, tips here shows up as tips on the right. Basically, within our, AS, within our file, we have a variable declaration, which is the tips array. And then we have a function, which is print tips. And here you have the function declaration. So every piece of code is converted into sort of a full representation in JSON. And you can dive down further to sort of really get what's happening. So for example, first we have a declarator of type let, then we're gonna see if we dive in further, we're gonna get the ID of it and the ID of it is tips. And you can say every time I hover on the right, you'll see it highlighted on the left. Then you're gonna see what is inside it, which is an array expression. And you're gonna see there are three literal items in the array. 
And here you can see the value of each one and so on. This function, by the way, the same thing, it will convert into ASC. So this is how you can convert code into JSON. This is how things like Babel, Webpack, Prettier, a hundred other tools work behind the scenes. They will all use ASTs and they'll be able to manipulate them. So jumping back to our project, what we did is we used the TS more package and we asked, okay, I want the expression statement. And then I want the first one basically, which is going to be use client and I want to remove it from the file. So now if you imagine we have a file with use client at the top, if we run this script, we'll be removing use client from the file. So if we take a look at another example, here we're going to show how it's used with to transform the imports. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to get our source file and we're going to get all the import declarations. So if we take a look at the accordion file, that's going to return these four lines at the top. Next, we're going to run through these different imports. And I'm just going to show you this example down here. But basically, once we find lib utils, so in this file that appears over here, we import CN from lib utils. Now in our project, CN might be in a different place. One of the options that Shad CN gives you is to put CN in a different folder. So you might put it in at utils instead of at lib utils. So we would then want to edit this file, right? And we'd want to change this import to at slash utils instead. So the first thing we're going to do is the module specifier needs to be at slash lib slash utils. So that's the end part from where we're importing. Then what we're going to do is get all the named imports. So this is anything we import. It could be CN, comma, hello, comma, foo, whatever. And then the last part is we need to find the one which is actually called CN from the named imports. Once we've found the CN named import, so we're going to take that import declaration and we're going to replace the part that says at lib utils and we're going to replace it with our own utils alias. And then once we've modified the file, we're going to return it. And then this is the file we're going to write to disk for the user. Hopefully that gave you a decent idea of how ASTs work. If you want to learn more, there are some great videos about it online. But roughly, this is what an abstract syntax tree looks like. For example, if we were taking this mathematical expression or piece of code and we wanted to turn it into an abstract syntax tree, it would look something like this. We basically first be doing the plus command and then each time we would have like sort of two children to it. So basically the plus command takes a three on the right and it takes the two times seven on the left. And then sort of this two times seven gets broken down again into two and seven. Now imagine the exact same thing for the code. And that's what we saw in AST Explorer. Here you basically have a root file that has a variable declaration and a function declaration. And each time we're going to break it down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there's also an apps folder. This represents the Shad CN website. So for example, it has docs in it, it has some examples, it has a sync page and so on. Let's take a look at the sync page. Here I've loaded up the sync page. You can see it has all the different components in it. And if we take a look at the sync page itself, you can see all it does is load different files from the registry. Now you'll notice here we're actually importing from the registry itself. So here you can see a card demo, a slider demo, the accordion, everything else. Everything in this file is what we see over here on screen. Here's our accordion, for example, and here's a calendar pickup. If you want to take a look at all the different examples that we saw at the beginning of the video, for example, if we want to look at the playground, the code for that is over here. This is the page.tsx file. This is just standard Next.js, the latest version that uses App Router. And you can just sort of see the code here. You can copy and paste it into your own project as well. What's different here about these examples is it's built on more complex components. So for example, code viewer will take a dialogue. It will take lots of different pieces and put them together to create a full project. So here you can see again, we're importing directly from the registry. And if you want to see what that looks like in the UI, once it's rendered to screen, it's all over here. Here you can see a drop down, for example. The very last thing I want to show you here is the registry itself. You'll find the registry in the apps www folder. Let's take a look at the registry. We'll see the default and so on. And here you can see the accordion file that we found before. So what is being sent back to us from the registry is this file. This file can be imported within the www project, which is the website. And it can also be sent to the CLI for the CLI to add to our own project. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we covered quite a lot here. Let me know what you think. Remember to subscribe every week. I cover a different open source project. This was covering a CLI, but in the past I've covered like sort of real full stack apps and we're going to cover more real full stack apps in the future. 
a lot of what I do is TypeScript apps, Next.js apps, Tailwind, React, and so on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe until next time.